Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. And today we are discussing DI boxes. That's a DI box. We're going to find out what it is, what its purpose and how it actually works and a few more extra details as well. So, what is a DI box? Well, DI box is a box, usually a metal box. They do come in as a rugged construction um, die cast metal boxes because most of the time these gears are used on live stage performances. You know, they need to be quite strong enough to be thrown away on the stage and everywhere, knocked over. This is a passive one, DI box. There's also an active DI box and I will talk about the differences as well and how they work um, later on in the video. This one that I have is, I purchased this from uh, Swamp Industries, uh, swamp.net.au. They are very reasonable priced and I think they're about, about $30 or so plus delivery. And I've got a couple of them and I use them to connect my keyboards and synthesizers when I'm playing a live gig on a big stage um, so that we have long cable runs. So what's the main purpose of a DI box? It basically converts an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. So the difference between unbalanced and balanced in simple terms, the unbalanced cables, they're more perceptible into electrical noise where the balanced one, due to how they send the signal across, they are less perceptible to electrical noise. And I'll go into details again in the later on in the video. So stay tuned for that. That's probably all it does. And it has few other options in there as well. So this one that I have, it cuts a 6.5 jack for unbalanced input. At the same time, another 6.5 uh, parallel output or a true output back again, unbalanced. So that when you connect your keyboard, your synthesizer or your guitar, you can actually have an output right next to you uh, to go to your powered monitors or your guitar amplifier and so on. And then same signal will actually convert into a balanced and travel across a long distance all the way to the mixing desk and so that the mixing engineer will level it up and put on the front of house speakers. Another thing to watch out for if you're purchasing it is an attenu attenuation or a pad switch. Basically what it does is attenuates the input signal where this one can do uh, either 0 dB, it has three positions, so it has 0 dB, minus 20 dB and minus 40 dB. So that loud signals that's coming in like synthesizers and um, keyboards and guitars because they're going to be converted into a microphone level signal and they're going to be plugged in into microphone input of your mixer. So if you don't have the attenuation switch and turn down, um, that means any loud signal like your synthesizer or your guitar or keyboards going to a microphone input, well, you can kiss goodbye your microphone input because it'll be too loud and it'll just go kaboom, blow it up. Yep, it will damage your microphone input on your mixer. So that's quite important. And another thing they should also have on is the ground switch. Basically what it does, it isolates the ground signal or the shield from this part, this side of your whatever equipment you connected to this side, which is usually your mixer. So let's have a look at some examples of how we can use the eye boxes. As you can see uh, on the screen, I have my keyboard left and right line level output connected to two DI boxes and the DI boxes have XLR cables going to the mixer which then goes to uh, the sound engineer where they adjust all the volume to the front of house speakers and also give me a monitor back on the stage so I can listen to what I'm playing. And if you have a guitar then it's the same situation. You've got your guitar plugged in to the input of the DI box and then the parallel output or the true output can go to your uh, guitar amp on stage so you can listen to what you're playing and at the same time the balanced uh, output can go to the mixer which then the sound engineer will adjust it to the front of house speakers. Now we don't only have to use the DI boxes on stage and live performances we can use DI boxes in the studio as well 
So in case we've got um, a noisy connection or some ground noise that we want to isolate, if you have keyboards and guitars, you can use the DI box to plug in to uh, your equipment and then have an XLR balanced output going to your audio interface or your mixer. So basically the difference between a passive DI box and active DI box, the passive DI box it simply includes a transformer that uh, converts and provides the balanced uh, output. And the active one basically uses uh, integrated circuits and uh, it does require power to, to run, obviously, to actually do the same conversion. What is an unbalanced line? Unbalanced lines consist of two wires, one which provides the signal and the other which provides the reference which is the ground or the shield. There are the types of connections you get on guitars, uh, keyboards and some domestic audio equipment and so on. And they are usually quarter inch jack connections or RCA connections as well and used to connect unbalanced equipment. So what are the disadvantages of unbalanced lines? As you can see in the diagram, what happens when the signal travels down the unbalanced line the line itself is exposed to noise and electrical interference along its length and the noise appears superimposed on the wanted signal at the receiving end. The cable shielding helps sometimes that situation a little bit but in general unbalanced lines are very prone to picking up electrical noise. What is a balanced line? A balanced line usually consists of three conductors two carrying the signal and a shield and a ground conductor. These lines are often used on professional equipment for carrying microphone and line level signals. They usually use an XLR connectors or quarter inch TRS tip ring sleeve jack for connection. In balanced lines the shield and the ground conductor does not carry any signal reference itself. So it can be left disconnected at one end to reduce any ground loops. But if you have a cable which has both ends connected and that's what you can use the ground switch on your DI box to isolate it. How does a balanced line work? To remove noise from the signal we need some way of working out what is wanted signal and what can be sort of uh, thrown away. Balanced lines achieve this by transmitting two versions of the signal down the length of the, of the wire. The source equipment sends the normal signal down one connector, usually called the hot, and a polarity inverted by 180 degrees, so phase inverted signal, down the other one, which is called the cold. This is usually done using either a transformer as in our DI box or electronic output stages. The cable itself is designed with the conductors having very similar impedances and twisted along the length so that any noise is picked up equally by both conductors no matter where in the cable it occurs. The receiving equipment has a transformer or electronic differential amplifier and takes the inverted signal and returns it to original polarity, so it converts the phase again. At this point, the wanted signals on each conductor are both the same polarity or phase. Whereas any noise is of opposite polarity, so summing the signals from the two conductors together reinforces the wanted signal and cancels anything unwanted leaving a recovered signal which is very close to the original. This is uh, known as a common mode rejection, um, which means any signal which is the same on both conductors is removed. So in simple terms, as we invert the wanted signal, its phase back 180 degree to match the original one, it means all of the noise are also inverted and any inversion and when you add them together, they cancel out. So while we get our signal back, the noise is cancelled out. As I demonstrated on the DI box, how I had an attenuator that attenuated the input signal 
by minus 20 dB and minus 40 dB. What does that all mean? So let's find out what is a decibel. A decibel is a tenth of a bell, a unit of level named after Alexander Graham Bell. A bell is a very large unit of measurement, so the prefix deci, which means one tenth, is used. Unlike volts or watts, that is a linear scale, a decibel uses a logarithmic scale. You might have noticed that the volume control on faders are marked in decibels, as are the markings on a mixer level controls and, and EVT everywhere else, pretty much. This is because our range of hearing is so vast that to use a linear scale, we would be using numbers from 0 to 1 million. So we use a logarithmic scale to make it easy to evaluate since decibel is the relative difference between two values. Here are some examples. Example 1. You increase the volume on a mixer or an amplifier by 6 dB. This is actually doubling the voltage that will appear at the output because 6 dB is a factor of 2. And we're going to have a look at the table a bit later on as well. So we could say that the level is now plus 6 dB. That is relative to what the level was, it is now 6 dB higher. Remember decibels are always relative to something. In this case to what it was before we doubled. We added 6 dB to the level. In example 2, same scenario, but this time we lowered the volume by 6 dB. This means we are having halving the voltage because a 6 dB is a factor of 2. So we could say the output is now minus 6 dB below what it was before, so half the voltage. These examples also show that it is possible to have positive and negative decibels if the vo voltage is plus 6 dB, it is twice the size as it was before. If it is minus 6 dB, then it is half the size it was before. So having a look at a simple decibel ratio table, we can see that 6 dB is, has a factor or a ratio of 2. So it's either doubled or halved. And as with my DI box, I have minus 20 and minus 40 dB. That means when I select minus 20 dB, it will actually reduce by a factor of 10. So if my guitar, which is producing around 100 millivolts, it will actually become 10 millivolts. And if I use minus 40 dB, which is a factor of 100, that means line level signal, which is usually around 0.7 volts, will actually become 70 millivolts. That, that we're talking about maximum uh, voltage of your of course that means we can have a maximum of you know 60 70 millivolts at a microphone level now since we know that the microphone level input can be anywhere between 10 to 20 millivolts um, at maximum then we can use this chart to be able to select a different uh, attenuation either minus 20 dB or minus 40 dB so that we can reduce the line level or the guitar level signal down to the microphone level. Well, now I hope you know more about what DI boxes are and what they use for and how they actually work. And at the same time, a bit more information about decibels and how uh, we measure decibels and what those numbers mean. So if you like this information, give me the thumbs up. If uh, didn't make much sense to you more than happy to give me the thumbs down as well um, you can also most welcome to uh, write a comment if you have any questions uh, in regards to DI boxes I'm more than happy to answer them for you as well and uh, also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel that way you get the latest information every time I upload a new video of course, don't forget to visit my website recordingstudio9.com because there's a lot more information and blogs and articles which is not available on YouTube. So uh, you're most welcome to visit there as well. And until next time, as always, I hope you make great music, nice and clean music as well, and enjoy. Cheerio, bye-bye. <laughs>